Apple announced three new phones this morning. iPhone XS, iPhone XS Max, wait a minute, the X is a Roman numeral in XS, so maybe it's iPhone XS Ma 10 and the iPhone XR, because that letter definitely makes sense. They are undoubtedly the worst named iPhones in history, but that's aside the point. Let's talk about the actual phones, because call me cynical, but I'm a little bit less impressed than everyone else seems to be. So much so that for the first year ever, I'm not buying the new iPhone. Speaking of less impressed, I'm not that when it comes to setup. These are the kind of segues that people pay me for. <laughs> Setapp gives you access to a suite of over 100 Mac apps worth thousands of dollars for less than 10 bucks a month. Go to the link below to begin your free seven day trial. Now, before all the Apple fanboys get their white ceramic edition panties in a twist, I am a current iPhone 10 user. I have owned and used this iPhone 10 every single day since release date, November 3rd, 2017. And it is undoubtedly the best iPhone I've ever owned. Nay, it's probably the best smartphone I've ever owned. Now, many will be quick to point out that, hey, trader, you talked a lot of heat on the iPhone 10 last year, and now you're saying you like it? Well, yeah, I am. I said I liked it last year too just that I thought iOS wasn't tailored to fit the needs of the bezel-less, now gesture-based device. In the last nine months, however, Apple has fixed nearly all of the bugs, and iOS 12, unlike iOS 11, I've been running the beta since it came out, actually feels like it was made with the new gesture-based handset in mind. And I can say with confidence that almost everything works well, save for the still moronic control center placement. In fact, I like this phone so much that it is the first year I've made it all the way to September without getting distracted by the new sexy springtime Android flagships. Understandably, I was pretty stoked for the September keynote because there were a number of wishes that I had to make the iPhone 10 go from really, really good to near perfect. And Apple addressed, well, none of them. My first issue was size. As a goofy kid who owned a massive Dell Streak back in high school, along with the first Samsung Galaxy Note, I loved phablet-sized phones for a long time. However, a couple of years ago, I kind of got stuck with an iPhone 7, and I came to love the small form factor of a smaller phone once again. When I upgraded to the iPhone 10 a year later, I didn't really like the size, and I still don't. Sure, iPhone 10 is only a little bit bigger than iPhone 7, but it is bigger and it's significantly heavier because it's made of steel instead of aluminum. And I'm probably not the only one that likes small phones. I think even Apple was surprised when the iPhone SE reached huge demand when it was released a few years ago. I guess not enough to keep it alive though because Apple killed the iPhone SE today. And now the iPhone XS, which is identical in size to the iPhone 10, is the smallest current gen iPhone that Apple sells. And personally, I think that sucks. But unlike years past, the small phone, I guess, isn't the cheap one, so that's good. No, no, the cheap $749 iPhone XR, wait, 10R, whoever thought mixing Roman numerals and letters was a good idea, is the entry-level model with an aluminum chassis and a 6.1-inch liquid retina LCD panel. Isn't that the most advanced marketing you've ever heard? It just so happens to be the most advanced LCD in the industry, with just a smidge over 820p resolution. Yep, it's got the same density as the iPhone 4. Well, and I guess the iPhone 8 for that matter. Now, once you go high res, it's really hard to go back. But for most iPhone users who really don't know any better, I'm sure that LCD will look great. And I admit that I'm actually pretty impressed by the way Apple jammed that screen into such a small form factor with small bezels. However, the press photos and the photos on apple.com do look a little bit better than real life. The bezels are noticeably larger on the LCD phones than the OLED phones. And the iPhone XR is actually quite thick. For reference, it's immediately obvious when holding an iPhone 7 and an iPhone 10 that the iPhone 10 is thicker. It's about 0.6 millimeters, which doesn't sound like a lot, but you can feel it. And the iPhone 10R is that same amount thicker than the iPhone 10. It's a meaty boy. Now, most people are claiming, and I suspect to be probably erroneously, that the iPhone 10R's battery is bigger than the iPhone 10. But I think the phone is thicker just based on the simple fact that it's an LCD panel. And those by nature are thicker than OLED ones. But I could be wrong because Apple's annoying obscure specs page does list the iPhone R as having a longer battery life than the iPhone X. But that may just come down to display efficiency and brightness. 
Other than the case sizes, materials, and displays, the only other hardware difference between the three models is that the iPhone XS and XS Max have a telephoto lens, where the iPhone XR does not. However, yet again, we find an interesting reason to opt for the cheaper iPhone XR. Portrait mode no longer requires the dual camera setup like years past. Apple is finally taking the Google route of focusing more on AI and software image processing than raw hardware prowess. Thanks to marketing mumbo jumbo like the neural engine that's part of the 812 Bionic chip, image processing permits depth mapping, which makes smart HDR, portrait mode, stage lighting, the variable software bokeh slider they showed off, etc., possible on all iPhone models. Well, all new iPhone models. The only advantage to having the dual camera system on iPhone XS and XS Max over the iPhone XR is to have that telephoto lens to avoid digital zoom. But other than that, the camera experience is exactly the same on the $749 iPhone as it is on the $1,099 iPhone. That's a first from Apple, and I welcome it. Kudos. Great job. Unfortunately, current iPhone 10 owners don't get any of these new features. It's not really surprising, but it is a bummer nonetheless. So other than the insane price, what the heck is my beef with these new phones then? Well, I've been watching Apple keynotes for years and years and years and a very long time, okay? And Apple always always brags about numbers. The camera pixels are two times deeper. The phone is 30% faster. The device charges 15% quicker. The adoption rate is 4,000% better than Android, etc. They love to brag. And today, they didn't, hardly at all. They talked about how the new A12 Bionic SoC is up to 15% faster and up to 50% lower power than the A11 Bionic from last year, but that's it. And that's not a very exponential leap in processing power. There was no bragging about the cameras, no bragging about the device strength, no bragging about the display, no bragging about Face ID. They talked about how great they are, but not in terms of raw numbers. It's X percent better, or it is X times better. And that's a little worrying to me because Apple always does that. And even if it's just a little better, like that 15% better CPU, Apple talks about it like it's the best thing since sliced bread. And today, they really didn't. Face ID was probably the biggest feature of iPhone X. It's a big deal. I like it a lot. It is way more consistent and reliable than Touch ID ever was. But it's slower, a lot slower. And a lot of people, and I can't really blame them, don't want to upgrade to Face ID until it's as fast or faster than Touch ID. This year, I expected it to be better. I expected it to improve. But is it? I don't know. Apple weirdly spun the keynote to make it sound like Face ID was faster without actually saying Face ID was faster. Have a listen. And it does it faster than ever before because the 10s now has faster algorithms and runs on a faster version of the secure Enclave. So it's gotten even better. So the new A12 Bionic chips speed up the hardware that's used for Face ID but is Face ID itself really faster? They never said it, and they never advertised it. And that is not like Apple. They had just finished bragging about how their chip was 15% faster. That's not that much. If Face ID were, say, two times faster, you better believe they'd say it. Heck, if it was only 50% faster, they'd still let you know. They'd tell you how it was the most incredible invention ever, and how it's the best iPhone they've ever made, and how you're going to love it. But they didn't, and they didn't do it with hardly anything. It's weird. Furthermore, I felt like they intentionally misled people with a number of things, including which is the 120 hertz digitizer refresh rate, which is very much not the same as the 120 hertz refresh rate of the screen on the iPad Pro called ProMotion. In fact, it was misleading enough to confuse an Engadget writer who, first of all, <laughs> lol, modern journalism, but he is a technology writer. Totally confused. The weird thing is that this is not even a new feature iPhone X had that same 120 hertz touch refresh rate digitizer. So they're making a big deal out of something that is not even a big deal and isn't even new. Why? Well, it makes me think that this year brings the most minor upgrades of any iPhone upgrade in recent history, and they had to make it sound better than it really is. I guess if you want a different size, like the behemoth iPhone XS Max, well, then obviously it's a good year because last year that phone didn't exist. Speaking of sizes, I would have upgraded if they released a smaller phone. They didn't. So I'm kind of disappointed. It was a meh keynote and a meh iPhone year, at least for me. 
I'm staying with my iPhone 10 because the 10s is only just a little bit better. On the other hand, iPhone 10R is a big deal, and I don't think that people are as excited enough as they should be. It's like last year's phone, the iPhone 10, but for the masses. And honestly, other than maybe the iPhone 3G, it might be the most important iPhone ever. For people that don't want to spend a mortgage payment on a phone, and there are many people like that, the iPhone XR brings nearly every single feature of the more expensive phones, except for it uses aluminum instead of steel, eh. It uses an LCD panel instead of OLED, and anyone who has used an Apple LCD knows that that is not much of a downgrade. And for $250 less than the next cheapest iPhone, with many cute colors to choose from, it is comparatively a killer deal, and Apple is going to sell a crap ton of them, even if it has a stupid name. Speaking of crap ton, Setup gives you a crap ton of Mac apps for less than $10 per month. Look, I know this is an ad, but I love Setup and I am a paying customer. The app suite isn't like shovelware garbage. You get some of the most famous and well-respected premium Mac apps around, like the writing app Ulysses, which by the way, normally costs $5 per month just by itself. Photo Lemur, which is a one-click AI-driven photo editing app that lazy people like me use all the time. iStat menus for monitoring your system performance and temperatures, which we all know Mac OS needs from time to time, especially your MacBooks that you find in a freezer, and a heck of a lot more. The setup installer is super well laid out and new apps install in just one click. And the app keeps your whole suite of apps updated. Please give Setup a try, not just to support Snazzy Labs, but because I know you're going to love it. Why? Because I do. Go to the link in the video description to start your seven day free trial with no credit card required. Well folks, that's all from me. Will you still watch me and think I'm cool even if I don't buy an iPhone XS? What am I kidding? You guys never thought I was cool anyways. <laughs> Thanks for watching and stay snazzy.